There's an entire world of bad advice out there on real estate photography that if you take it to heart, then you could damage your career, you could have lost income, and you'd prevent yourself from growing your photography business. So in this episode, I'm gonna call out those untruths and I'm gonna prove why they are false. First, all of these lies have something in common. It's known as the Dunning-Kruger effect, and that's this nature of human psychology where we tend to overestimate our abilities based off our experience. So a lot of times people that have tried something think they know a lot more about it than what they have. And unfortunately, you'll see a lot of this on social media where Pros that have a lot of experience don't have the time to necessarily go through all of the social media posts and all of the groups that are out there on photography, and they also don't have time to read all the comments, where some other inexperienced people that aren't as busy and aren't really keeping up being a professional photographer do have more time, but they're actually overestimating their ability on the things that they are commenting about. So when you do get comments on something that you're asking a question for in some social media group, it is a good idea to look up who is giving you that advice. You can see who they are on their Facebook page and their Instagram page, and if they're not a professional photographer, then you're not going to be getting professional photography advice. Now, this isn't to say that unless you're a professional experienced photographer, you might be wrong in everything that you say. It's just that when you are taking advice from somebody, be aware that if they're highly opinionated about something and they don't have a a lot of experience, then they really are suffering from Dunning-Kruger. David Dunning himself, one of the authors of the Dunning-Kruger effect, has said and called this the ignorance of ignorance. It's where we don't know what we don't know. So anyways, just be aware of where you're getting some of this information from if you are asking questions on social media and know who is giving you that advice. So with that said, let's start out with the first big lie that's out there, and that is that you should always outsource your editing. Now, there are cases when outsourcing your editing might make sense, but that's usually later in your career when you've really grown your team and you just can't handle all the work yourself. Delegation is an important part of any business, but it has to get to a certain area of growth. If you don't learn how to do your editing and if you can't do your editing yourself, Yourself, then you're really going to be damaging your career. And there's a few reasons for that. And this really stems from why you would wanna outsource to begin with. If you're just starting out doing real estate photography and you're outsourcing your editing, it may be that you're finding that editing is very difficult. And if so, you might be capturing improper footage or poor footage and then editing becomes harder. It could also be that you just don't have a lot of experience yet with editing and that's okay. Every skilled trade that you learn takes time to work on. The first time you try anything, it doesn't matter if it's photography or auto mechanics, it doesn't matter, it will take you longer the first time you try it than it will a year later. That's because you need to work on that craft and learn to perfect it. But if you immediately start out the gate with just, it's being too complicated, I just have to send this, I need to outsource it, there are good editors out there, but you will be losing out on your career growth because when it comes down to doing higher end editing, higher quality work, you won't have the skills to be able to do it. Myself, I don't outsource any of my editing and I never have. And that has led to a bigger career working for not just the listing market in real estate, but also for interior designers, builders, architects, and other higher paying work because as I'm shooting, I know exactly what needs to be edited. I know my limits on editing, but here's the big one, is that I can charge more for editing. When you get into these higher paying markets and you can prove your worth, then you can garner more money by being able to edit. But if you're just starting out and you're finding it very difficult, then you really need to take a closer look at the photography footage that you are capturing and how you're editing it. And above all else, that sets the foundation for being a professional real estate photographer. If you're finding that those areas are very difficult for you and you're having a hard time with it, then that is something I can help you with. So before getting on to the other big lies, I did wanna mention, if you're not aware, I do have courses and books on real estate photography and videography. In my real estate photography online course series, I cover everything from doing high-end professional interior photography, 
expert editing, professional exteriors, and also videography. I've also written best-selling books on real estate photography as well, and I have links to all of that down in the description for this video. Also look for the discount bundles on my courses to save you some money by buying more than one course at a time. But now let's move on to some of these other lies, some of these misperceptions when it comes to real estate photography. The second biggest lie, for years people have been saying this and it is just completely false, that realtors are cheap. You're not gonna make money doing real estate photography. Look, I've been doing this a long time. I've shot literally thousands of homes for many a years. <laughs> I'm in my 60s now. I've had a very successful career doing this. And yes, I make good money doing it. Thinking though that these realtors won't pay for it is a big misperception. It's not that all realtors are cheap. What it is, is that the dominant market of realtors out there they consist of new realtors, realtors that haven't tried this yet. So they're very budget conscious and they really don't realize the importance of having good photos. Now, the experienced long-term realtors, the ones that you wanna have as clients because they'll give you sustainable work because they're going to keep at this career themselves, they know the importance of good quality real estate photos, videos, and other media. And that's because it doesn't just sell the house, it sells them. When a realtor has to go and acquire a listing, as a realtor, you have to be interviewed by people and those people, those sellers, are gonna interview multiple agents. When you can show as a realtor that you have professional photography, professional video, high-end results, you sell yourself as a person knowing how to market that seller's property. So good realtors, the very successful ones, know the importance of marketing themselves by showing that they work with professional media providers. So those are, once again, the agents that you wanna go for. Thinking that all realtors are cheap, that's just wrong. Instead, the realtors that matter aren't cheap and they will pay for high quality service and they will pay a high quality price to have it. And the third big lie that's out there is that quality doesn't matter, it's just real estate photography, and that is so false. It goes back to the first two lies in a lot of ways because if you can't prove that you can do high-end work, if you can't prove that you can do high-quality photography, you're gonna be stuck in the lower end of the listing market for your entire career. If you want to progress, if you want to make more money, one of the progressions in real estate photography is to start moving out of the listing market and move into the market of architectural photography. And that's where you're starting to work with interior designers, builders, and other higher end businesses that then pay you by the hour to shoot and also pay you by the hour to edit. You can take your time, do things right on site, take your time, do things right while you're editing, and you can make a lot more money. At this point in my career, I do about 50% listing and 50% is everything else. And those listing clients of mine, they've kind of been winnowed down to where I'm just getting the ones that are the most high pay because now they're competing to get my time compared to my other work. And that's where it's less stressful. You're not running around all over the place to try to shoot five houses in a day I've said before, I'd rather go to one $500 gig than five $100 gigs. And in today's market, it's pretty easy just in the listing market to charge $200, $300 for a simple house. Yeah, you could do two or three of those a day. If you get into the architectural market, then you could spend a day just easily making $600, $800 for just driving to one location. So it's a matter of saying, do I want to grow my career? Do I want to be able to get higher end work? Then you need to start proving you can do higher end work now, and that's where quality counts. If you stand out above the competition, then you'll be the one that gets called to do those higher paying gigs. So watch who you're getting your advice from. Try things yourself. Actually grow your career. Know who also to get your advice from. I'm not the only pro out there, there are others as well. But if you stick with it and if you really try, you can make this a successful career.